Tackle today, Justice Brothers from Tackle Trading, bringing you all the charts, the analysis, the news, so that you can be informed in just a few minutes. Uh, some interesting economic data, S&P 500 attempting to hold its breakout, some AI stocks uh, starting to get in the news, and uh, I have an AI guy, my brother, he's my AI guy who has an upcoming AI uh, webinar. Uh, tell us a little bit about it, Matt. Yeah, I got an AI Gold Rush webinar coming up next Wednesday, October 4, uh, 16th at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The link to register is in the uh, description. So if you want to attend and learn a little bit about the AI marketplace and AI opportunities in the financial world, uh, come join us on uh, next Wednesday. Yeah, a market to uh, S&P. Uh, this is a breakout. Whenever the S&P breaks out of a multi-week consolidation pattern, it is going to get traders from around the world paying attention because of the importance of the chart. Uh, trying to hold the breakout level this morning, Matt, uh, what are you looking at? Yeah, breakout yesterday was really kind of the key point here is we did officially close above that resistance level at the 574 to 575 level for the first time in the last three weeks. Uh, like we talked about uh, yesterday and the day before, a little abnormal to see this, this degree of consolidation without some degree of pullback or a breakout going on three weeks after that multiple time frame breakout just recently. But here we are starting earnings season. We got Delta today, but the kickstart is tomorrow with JP Morgan and uh, market seem seemingly wants to break out. Now, uh, regarding today's price action, a little bit of a gap down doji here today. And uh, when you look at the futures market, you can kind of see the uh, overnight action, which was really what created some of that gap down. But overall, Mark, just a really kind of a doji type feel. The reason I wanted to go into the intraday data was to show you a little bit of the volatility as due to the CPI report to, that was released earlier today. You saw that uh, uh, gap down on the SPY. Well, that's because we had a nice little move down from, in, uh, from a CPI move on that report right there. Hasn't really seen any follow through, however. And when you do look at the daily chart and you see that small candle on the right hand side, just a little bit of inside candle, but not a lot of volatility on a miss on CPI. But if you'll recall in the Trading Justice podcast this week, we were talking about the the, the anticipated market reaction to the CPI report. And the, and the conversation was really about the market is set up to not really care about the CPI report, given where the CPI report was last month and where the expectations were. And so even though we got a miss on the CPI report today, the year over year numbers still look fairly decent. And that alleviates some of that month over month concern. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, and, and we broke that down that, listen, if you have a miss on CPI, and it's not a big one. Don't expect a horrific sell-off to occur. No, uh, not not surprised at all. This was this was really kind of built into it, and that's why you want to listen to the Trading Justice podcast podcast every weekend. Yes. Uh, so uh, listen, uh, holding the breakout level, we're going to continue to break down this chart on a day to day basis. Very important chart. Uh, odds are you hold the breakout level, you take a move up here, Matt, but we're going to pay attention to the chart. That news that came out, there was a lot of economic news that came out. There's a lot of individual stock news, busy news day, CPI, more anticipated than it normally would have been uh, with labor market maybe coming in a little bit strong, had some more eyes, and you did come in at a slightly elevated readings. Uh, jobless claims also had a big miss, but this is a context type of economic day. Yes, did you have elevated readings? You did. But CPI year over year is at 2.4%, which is the lowest number since April of 2021. That is unlikely to cause the Fed to panic and go out there and say, okay, we can't cut anymore. Jobless claims, which was one of those, when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's a much bigger number. It was the biggest number since the summer of 2023. But context matters here as well. You saw significant surges in unemployment claims in areas impacted by Hurricane Helene. Hurricane Helene came in, you saw North Carolina had big surge, you had other states like Kentucky, Tennessee, areas impacted, see sizable uh, you know, increases in claims. So rather than a big macro point, oh my goodness, economy's cracking, this map seems to be an event specific number. Well, context does matter when it comes to economic analysis, and especially on that week over week uh, type reporting. And, you know, the Hurricane Helene obviously had a, uh, just an absolutely destructive uh, uh, situation. And, and now we have Milton in Florida. So I think you can expect uh, jobless came, uh, claims to be a little bit elevated over the next few weeks. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what stocks do you got in the news for us today? Yeah, we got a couple stocks in the news here today as we start getting into a little bit of earnings season. The official start is tomorrow with JP Morgan, but we got Delta and Domino's here today. Uh, Delta came in with a miss, but it was just a very slight miss, 11% below the expectation of 156. It came in at 150. Uh, revenue, on the on the other hand, did increase 1% year over year. Guidance was reaffirmed. So we're dealing with a little bit of a miss on Delta, but it's a small miss in line everywhere else. A little bit of a walk in the park type report coming out of delta tesla's in the news as they have their uh their rover taxi day here today so we'll have a little bit more to talk about them uh tomorrow but uh tesla and amd have uh uh, uh important news coming out today so keep an eye on those two stocks uh out of announcements out of amd announcements out of tesla that certainly couldn't drive uh, uh quite a bit of volatility on both of those two stocks and then on dominoes Domino's came in with a beat, uh, 16% above that expectation. So they did come in with a pretty decent beat. Remember, earnings are always low bar expectations. Not always, but right now we do have a low bar expectation. And so when you have that low bar expectation, the average beat on EPS is right around 8%. And so when you do get a 8% beat, that's not exactly that great, given the fact that we all know the, the earnings get uh, get a low bar treatment. Well, when you come in 16% above that expectation, that's a little bit better. Uh, Domino's did not, uh, did not uh, uh, provide guidance, however. So when you are looking at these from a technical perspective, Delta on uh, a little bit of a wide range doji here today, trying to move down uh, with the earnings report, uh, the slight miss on the EPS side of the equation. But like I said, uh, uh, more of a walk in the park type of report coming out of Delta uh, in line across the board and just as a challenging resistance level more than anything right around that 52 level that is a, a very important resistance level. So it could be a little bit difficult to break. Uh, but as for their earnings report, uh, just an inline earnings report out of uh, uh, Delta. Now on the Domino's Pizza st uh, side of the equation, remember they had that 16% beat against EPS. They did not provide guidance. They did not gap down, but they certainly did test down on that CPI release. But now they fought right back up, holding really firm against a triple bottom at that 400 level. Not ready for prime time yet, but that does put it on reversal territory. No doubt about that from a technical perspective. And then when you're looking at Tesla here, just a little bit of a fading downward uh, path here. Obviously, they have their uh, cyber, uh, cyber event here today. And once again, keep an eye on AMD as well as they are uh, have some news coming out later on today as well yeah those are charts uh amd and tesla that could pop at any point today any point today uh generally pretty healthy backdrop on commodity charts this morning we're seeing most uh commodities up uh let's go uh give me the dollar give, i mean give me that dollar what do you see here, Matt? Yeah, just the continuation of the momentum. Uh, you, you have some uh, a miss on the CPI, which is which is actually positive for the dollar because the dollar is going to have to reflect that uh, that you know increasing inflation uh, conversation or the sticky inflation conversation. I don't know if we should call it sticky yet. I know other people are calling the inflation sticky. I don't I don't think uh, sticky is the right word for inflation as of yet. But the dollar is going to have to reflect that. Uh, and then on the initial claim side, that offsets it a little bit there. So a little bit of a wash on the uh, economic analysis here today. When you are looking at the dollar, what it, what it, what is important here is it's starting to come into some major areas of resistance. And when you understand moving averages, once you get above certain moving averages, they have a tendency to go to the next one. And uh, we call that a moving, a moving average pocket at tackle trading as part of the hard 14, which uh, Coach Mark here is the author of. But you're seeing that pocket get filled. And that's that next really important level of resistance is right around that 20 weekly. Why is that important? Because if we start to see slowing momentum on this dollar move over the last two weeks, and we see pivot uh, formations back to the downside, that's going to do nothing but improve a commodity landscape that quite frankly looks, I, I, I'm sorry, I know gold's down in the last week, but if you were going to tell me the dollar did what it did in the last two weeks, I, I would tell you I, I, I'm as impressed with gold's performance as, as you can be. Man. There's nothing Man. here. And the interday chart on gold looks fantastic on a support build. It, it, I mean, it, it absolutely it, does. Like nice. you, I mean, you came down both. You came down uh, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday to the same level and said, no, 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 no. 
Uh, well, and, and, and not only the support level on the intraday, but the resistance levels are starting to get a little bit more clean as that uh, 90 MA is kind of converging against that 20 as well. That looks pretty good from a gold situation. Uh, when you're looking at silver, silver's uh, fighting back, trying to build a little bit of support after that nasty uh, uh, candle we had on Tuesday kind of blew up that multiple time frame breakout. Now we're looking at this as a little bit of a pullback, needs to build support. And the last two candles are really good candles when you're you're talking about the building of something, the building of a support level. You don't want to see after volatility, you don't want to see immediately right back up because that's just algorithms. That's not anybody making decisions. That's not real demand. That's not a real move. That's an algorithm move. And a lot of those th times it comes right back down. You want to see those vol that volatility digest. You want to see it go down over time. And that's what's uh, what where you're seeing support get built. So you do like that. You still certainly need to see a little bit more. And I think you're having a, a, a very similar conversation on copper as we're looking at on gold and uh, silver. The difference here is you're a little bit deeper, a little bit more volatile and a little bit more sensitive to the Chinese economic data out there. On the crude oil side of the equation, uh, uh, it is uh, constantly a little up, little down, little up, little down. And when I mean little, I mean a lot. Um, uh, it hasn't really simmered down yet, but we are starting to see the early beginnings. And I do mean that early beginnings of an increase in support. You got to be looking at that as a bullish trend. It caught the 90 MA here today. And so uh, I'd like- This is the first time that oil looks like a technical pattern. Uh, it, well, because it is uh, like this yeah. is the first technical pattern, but the problem is it's still it hasn't reduced volatility. And, so, and, yes. and, and, and yeah, and you also have news out of the Middle East. Plus, China is making a huge announcement on Saturday that we don't know uh, that could impact, uh, you know, commodities. Oh, well, well we've seen what those Chinese announcements have done over the last month. Right. Yeah. The, from the bazooka and everything that had anything to do with China up, 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 like skyrocketing up to, oh my goodness, this week, China's not stimulating this week, everything down. So yeah, China's uh, China's going to move some uh, move some markets. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to break all these down. A lot of interesting charts out there. It's going to be a rare, very robust lounge. Come be a part of it. Sign up for Tackle today. Free trial. Go to tackletrading.com.